Celeb Savant is a career retrospective type interview focusing on singers, actors and industry experts. Join Barrett Edelstein now as he dives into the entertainment world. Dirty Loops are a band that was founded in 2008 in Sweden by three friends, Aaron Mellegaard, Jonah Nielsen and Henrik Linder, as an experiment to try things beyond what was considered allowed in normal music sessions. After two years of slightly altering popular tunes, the band decided to upload a cover version of Lady Gaga's Just Dance on YouTube in order to perhaps get a gig or two. More cover videos were released and Dirty Loops gained a lot of momentum, which eventually led to a record deal working with Andreas Carlson and David Foster. The first album, Loopified, was released in 2014, containing mostly original songs. Upon its release, Dirty Loops embarked on a world tour as a headline act and as a support for Maroon 5. In 2020, album Phoenix was released, and in 2021, Dirty Loops collaborated with Corey Wong and released their co-album, Turbo. In 2024, Dirty Loops will embark on their first USA-Canada tour in 10 years. The band is also working on new music, and they'll perform it in this upcoming tour. Up next on Celeb Svant, we've got Jonah Nielsen from Dirty Loops. Where do we find you in the world, and how are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this. Um, um, I, I am in um, Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden, and um, I'm in my studio at the moment and talking to you and I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Lovely. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm great. Thank you. I'm excited to be chatting with you today. First of all, why the name Dirty Loops? Where does that come from? It is a bit random, actually. It's a um, long time ago. We were touring with a Swedish artist. Um, and uh, we didn't have a band name for our band that we had. So he, we just asked him, our friend, who is an artist, uh, can you come up with a couple of names? And he just sent out a couple of suggestions. And that was one of the ones that just stuck out. And so we stuck with it and don't really know wh what it <laughs> means. <laughs> but yeah, it fits, I, I suppose. Yeah. But isn't loops a term in, mus in the music world? It really is. Yeah, it's something that you yeah, you loop a sequence or something. So I don't okay. really we don't really do that much, do we? <laughs> <laughs> so now let's rewind. At you specifically, at what age did you think, cool, you want to be in the entertainment world, whether it was as a child or as a teenager, and how did that accumulate to you of being part of the band and the journey to today? So your journey in the entertainment world. Right. Um I never really knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment world. I knew that I wanted to do music for sure. Like my whole life, I had no other goal whatsoever. Okay. So uh, the entertainment thing came a bit later, I believe. Um, it's kind of when we started, maybe a tiny bit before that, but like um, when we started Dirty Loops, our group, and um, uh, we, we our goal with it was not to be in the under in entertainment business either it was just like to have fun and develop ourselves as mus musicians really to really nerd out and <laughs> have fun yeah. uh, you know so and then all of a sudden things just started happening so i kind of get like launched into it and then i realized that m maybe we can we can actually do something cool that people seem to appreciate what we're doing and let's keep on doing it and see what happens it's, it's just good fun and yeah <laughs> that's kind of the journey and then you know things started happening when you were launched into it as you said was that a surprise because you were just doing it for fun yeah um or was it like oh let's go but what or was there <laughs> was there resistance to it and was uh, there surprise right right good question um i i think there it was definitely a surprise it had no idea it's gonna have any sort of effect at all nobody uh, nobody expected it whatsoever so that was a surprise and but then when it actually happened and people started to um uh, like people started to reach out to us i th i think it was very scary but i'd never had a doubt that i would go for it because i felt like this is a 
this is um a big opportunity and mm. i will i want to do music and i want to be able to live out of this and if people appreciate this stuff that we're doing that is yeah. a little bit hmm <laughs> different then i am all like, like i want to hear what you want us to <laughs> to achieve here so okay. yeah and why was it scary um because we went from being three nerdy musicians with long hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> not a care in the world to getting in contact with like david foster from um mm. you know the a yeah. monster producer and just going over to los angeles and and doing all these big performances and meeting all these people and all of a sudden just get like i said in the beginning launched into the game sort of yeah, yeah. it was just uh such a big contrast um Oh, okay. I think it would be shocking for anyone. So it's just like, whoa. Yeah, I, like I said, we weren't prepared either. So yeah. a little bit of that imposter syndrome, I believe. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I think, yeah, <laughs> everyone has it to a certain degree in certain aspects of their world. If they're willing to put themselves out there and risk and follow their passion. But sometimes it's like, oh, is this raining me right now? As should I be here? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. What totally, you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, I saw on your Wikipedia page that you dabbled in a number of different genres. So, what for the listeners who may not know you? What genres do you guys perform and create in? Um, I would say it's a mix of all kinds of stuff that we've ever listened to. For me, it's a lot of. I have a lot of classical music influences since I'm I'm grown up in a family with uh, classical musicians. Both parents are choir leaders in church, so I had a lot of that coming in, and then listening to Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson going up, and uh, all kinds of different jazz, like Oscar Peterson and mm. uh, Pat Metheny Group, and then uh, that, that's from like from my influences, and then from Aaron the drummer, he, he has a lot of that too, but also he he has Toto as a as an influence, I know. Yeah. Um, and Henrik comes from all kinds of stuff too, like fu more fusion orientated music and sometimes some rock music, some um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I know he, he loved back in the day and I, I think he still does. But so it's like all of these kind of things we put in our little mixer <laughs> okay. and then whatever comes out is, you know, whatever comes out. But I don't think there's an, ever been a conversation. Uh, what should we do? I think we just... You know, we, we go for it. And then what comes out on the other side is a mystery to all of us. <laughs> Am I in a, I understand you correctly. You guys go into the studio without a, an, an idea of saying, okay, cool. This is going to be jazz. This is going to be rock orientated. This is going to be like this. You go in with an idea or a concept and whatever spits out or comes out at the end and the creative journey is what it is. Yeah, kind of. If someone gets an idea, okay, or if we we uh, uh, let's say two of us gets an idea, um, it's usually pretty clear from the very beginning what it is we want to achieve. For, for example, I'm I'm that kind of person, that kind of musician that I I come up with the best ideas away from the keyboard or okay. away from any instrument because I've that then I start a completely different process going to the keyboard or actually starting producing. I I really love just walking around or thinking about it or just let um, inspiration flow and see what what happens if I'm just close my eyes or just do something else. You know, I get more insp inspired that way. So we've segued into this uh, topic. So when you're creating original Dirty Loops songs, yeah. it, obviously it's a collabor collaborative process with all three of you guys, but. Is it easy every time? What invigorates it? What motivates it? I think I th I think one thing that we're all very clear on, I think when we create is that we do want to have a song without anything. It has to work with at least it's my opinion. I I, I have to um express that at, at least that I mm. I like when a song works with only piano and vocals or maybe even vocals. It has to be that clear. Like the the whole picture has to be that clear that it's a good song without any sort of weird chord progressions or anything like like that i want it to be a good song that you can listen to 
And then after that, you can create whatever you want on top of it and to emphasize what's the most important, which is the melody or whatever that is. But then I am, I am all about I'm all about the arrangement, as okay. you, you might know if you've listened. I love, of course, the melody and, and create writing songs too. But like, I think where I might excel is when I get to arrange and like go wild on the idea how to present an idea. I really love to. A melody can be presented in different sort of ways. It can be created. Uh, like you, you can feel very sad if you hear a melody that if you if you play if you dress it in a, that kind of clothing, mm. you know, uh, but it can also feel happy if you dress it in a different kind of yes. clothing, if, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. that to me is why I do this, I think, because I love the emotion. I love knowing, getting you to feel something and uh, uh, to challenge myself in that uh, aspect. I, that's that's what I really love to do. Do you bringing these elements up? So I'm diving into it. So I'm not sure if you're yeah. aware of NLP, which is neuro neuro linguistic programming. So this is the way people process information. So people are either visual, which means they create pictures, or they audio, which means they hear the words, they understand the words, they understand the sentences, and so forth. Or they are kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. I'll do that word again, kinesthetic, which means it's about the e energy, the emotion, the body language, and so on and so forth. Now, you right. mentioned in your co discussion around creating music about creating pictures and also about the emotion. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm interested to find out. So when you listen to songs, whether it's your own songs or by other artists, specifically now music, not any other types of processing of information, but with music. Okay. Do yeah. you see pictures? Do you hear the words or is it about the energy and the emotion? I think it's about the energy and the emotion. Okay. I, uh, yeah. I think so. Uh, but I do. It's weird. I can uh, I kind of have that uh, that aspect that I can see. I can see colors sometimes or even uh, like shapes and stuff. Yes. But for, for me, it's all about, um, like I said, more more the emotion of yes. like what what does this make me how does this make me feel? feel it's like that's yeah that's that's what i would say <laughs> but you see the thing is that that would still be kind of aesthetic because if you're seeing colors and shapes that is seeing the energy around the music which is right. still falls under the same category so okay speak. okay yeah yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. <laughs> now when you're listening to music by other artists are you able to relax and just chill and listen or is your technical music creation brain unpacking what you're listening to i would say it is yeah i think i don't i can't really relax listening to i, I don't really listen that much to music um, oh, okay in general because i i just don't have the creative space or the the um, the capacity to take it in most of the time yeah if okay. i if i do i if i need it i i have of course listened to a lot of music but doing it the how much i'm actually doing it right now it's just quite impossible yeah. but if i do which absolutely happens it's classical music uh all the way because it's what i yeah might end up doing in the end too like uh i really want to go into film scoring and stuff like that um, okay so would that be sort of like a side hustle from dirty loops it would be yeah okay <laughs> so what attracts you to film scoring what about it is um things oh that that would be cool to do because I, it's, a, it's a very good question but i think exactly what we talked prior to this mm. about like the, um that it literally is you get an emotion that you're trying to capture in music if you if you're watching a movie and you're, you don't have any music just watch watching the picture you can feel all these emotions but how does that sound like it's yes. like pretty magical to try to come up with that isn't it okay. it's just like there's no no calculations, not nothing like that that could ever put a finger on what is it that you know how does that sound like it's just an emotion and it's just like I suppose a talent to try to capture that in the best possible way, and that attracts me that attracts me a lot. I saw that you did covers of Lady Gaga's just dance and a number of others in your way. Do you still do covers and create your own music? Is it a balance of each or are you just creating your own music now? 
Well, it is a little bit of a balance of each. Um, okay. We have been doing a couple of covers, but uh, lately too. But it's not our focus. I would say. I would say that there is definitely more of our own music than cover music right now. But yeah, there is some stuff that's coming up um, uh, pretty soon that you'll hear. <laughs> what makes you decide to say, "Cool, we're going to cover this song"? Is it just a love of all of you for that song, or it's a way of channeling that song into your voices what why do you choose specific songs to cover well i think it's changed over the years um okay. in the beginning it was we just need something to play <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, it was more like okay okay like let's take some some of the top hits and see what we can do with that like let's make new versions of it it was just like the the concept that we had and we just took stuff that like listen to some some of the songs oh i can hear something on this and we just happened to pick that one in particular but later i think with since we've done that so much it's it's it gets less and less appealing to do the same thing over and over again so i think uh for example not too long ago we did uh a michael jackson cover thriller yes which was challenging because i in my opinion like i don't really listen that i i don't listen at all to be frank to um to uh, the top hits today but mm. uh i i really lo do love thriller as a song and all the michael jackson songs so that's that that was a very big challenge because you don't want to change too much then because it's mm. already there you know so uh i hope we came up with a good solution for it but um when it come to <laughs> came to all the songs that we did back in the day like that when we start uh first started we absolutely messed all of it up like we just did. <laughs> we did not really care about the original too much, even oh, though okay. we have no, dis no, no disrespect, mm. of course, um, to it at all. It was just, um, I think we just want to do, really do our thing. <laughs> you definitely had a great solution for Thriller because for the listeners, I recently re uh, spoke to and interviewed Penny Ford from Snap and right. I asked her a, a question, which I'm going to be asking you a little bit later. I'm not going to give you that question now. But her response was one of her favorite songs was your version of Thriller. And she even said she thinks you did a better version than Michael Jackson. That's what she told oh, really? me. Really? Yes, that's wow. what she told me. <laughs> that's a compliment. <laughs> that's fantastic. That, wow. Yeah. If you speak to her again, say, tell her thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to ask you that question right now. I know your answer will be different every time. And I know you don't listen to music much, considering you're always creating it. But if you had to take time to listen to five songs by other artists, I'm not saying favorites. I know there could be lots of them in inverted commas because you were listening as a child, etc., for a long time. But what five songs... Would you play by other artists if you had the opportunity after this if, uh, chat? What would you play? Uh, can it be classical musicians too? Or classical, anything, uh, anything. Composers. Yes. Yeah. Anything. Okay, then I would probably go with Rachmaninoff, mm -hmm. um, and I would might go with some Prokofiev. <laughs> okay. And uh, maybe an English um, uh, composer named John Rotter mm -hmm. that I really love. Uh, a lot of choir music, and then if I choose something from a, something different, I would go and listen to some of my buddies probably like there's a band called nowhere i don't know if you ever heard of nowhere i think so yes yes yep and then um yeah maybe some jacob collier yes um yes. yeah uh, someone you should have on this show probably yeah those were five right yeah that I was five so. nice yeah. list, nice mix <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you enjoy about performing live i enjoy the fact that you get to see like when when you are releasing music and you see all these numbers on youtube or whatever um you know all these numbers of people the views of, yes. of youtube clips when, when you're only doing that you don't realize that they're actually real views <laughs> you just they're just a number yes so when you get out and play in front of a crowd and you see all these people who actually bought tickets to go and see you it is quite an extraordinary feeling it is a grateful feeling and you know it's kind of that we're not performing we're, we're doing this together with them in a way 
that you know yes they are listening to what we're doing but we're here to celebrate this <laughs> together yes <laughs> sort of if that makes sense it's and it's that's a beautiful thing i think that's what i enjoy the most so i've got a point of discussion around this i'm i'm always that guy right up front dancing jamming I'll take my cell phone yeah. out for maybe one or two videos, one or two photos, and I put my phone away. I notice that the yeah. people around me, a lot of times, will have their cell phones out for like 70, 80% of the show, like turning, right. filming themselves with you behind them. Do you feel that that takes, takes away from that to togetherness that you mentioned, that feeling of that energy of togetherness, or it's just where society is at the moment? I think... Um, it kind of does, but I think they are the ones who are missing out then rather okay. than me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it's their choice. So if that, that makes them happy, okay, let's go with it. But, um, you know, yeah, I think it's a bit sad that people do it that much because, you know, anything you do uh, will just be get, get released on YouTube that people can, you know, if you've created a show that you want people to see and be mm. there for, it's going to be up on YouTube. So it's, it, it doesn't get like as precious and uh, special as you yeah. would like it to be but as you said i totally do accept that's just how it is right now and i will not be sad because of that i just don't have the energy to yeah i love me a cd i still buy my cds every month i love the aesthetic of holding something for me it's an energy exchange with you guys for all the hard work and creativity you create i'm not sure if you're aware that cds cassettes and vinyls are all making a massive comeback for example, last year alone in the UK, there were 5.9 million vinyls sold, sold the biggest since 1990. CDs are also uh, rising and cassettes. We also have these digital wow. platforms where people consume music on. What are your observations and perceptions of each? Oh, I, I think that's lovely news, by the way. I, I love that the vinyl has come back. I've seen that a lot. Uh, I did not know about cassettes and CDs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I grew up on. Yes. And I guess a little bit of vinyl too. But yeah. that's fantastic. I would love for it to get back to that point because that was what made it so special. I remember going to the CD store with mm. mom and, you know, get like or get like as a Christmas gift, get, get an actual CD with something that you really wanted to have. It's it's just can't can't get better than that. It's the whole package, and you 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 really know that you're gonna listen to that. Now there's just an a crazy that like people the people consume more music than people can 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 create music. They're yeah. faster, and I think that's what actually contributes to the fact that it's actually not that much quality music out there. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, yeah I think it's just you know. Music has sort of become disposable in the sense that, oh, I don't like this song. I'll just skip it. I'm on Spotify. Uh, like, uh, you know, it's sort of in the background. Yeah. It's not engaging. Whereas if you go and collect your CDs or your records or your cassettes, it's that whole experience. Like, ah, I'm putting it on. I'm listening to it from song 1 to 15 or 12, whatever it is. So it becomes a whole journey and an experience. Totally. Yeah, I yeah. agree fully. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's sad. Um, but it's not like that. But I, it's a very, I'm very happy to hear that it's coming back. That's yes. amazing. And what's interesting, it's all the teenagers and like the early uh, 20s and like late teens and that are the ones that are going to buy vinyls and CDs and that. It's not the older generations, which is quite interesting. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, cool. So <laughs> that's really cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So what's happening in 2024 for you guys? Oh, a lot is happening. Um, we are going on our first, uh, not first, but... It's been a while. Um, we're going uh, on a U.S. tour in uh, March to April. April, mm -hmm. So that will be a lot of fun. And we're releasing a new record, too. Um, Wait, when is that coming out? When is that coming out? Uh, it hasn't been set in stone, okay. but I've, I'm thinking before that sometime, I hope. Okay. Um, we'll, 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 we'll see. Um, but, yeah, it's in the works, everything. So uh, hopefully we can let something out. Um, Sh shortly um but okay. yeah so that's happening and then like a lot of touring um for the rest of the year too so uh yeah it's exciting really exciting awesome so jonah the yeah. podcast is listened to throughout the world so as a final message to the listening audience what would you like to say well everybody take care of each other and uh make music if you want to if you don't want to you don't have to make music no but do what you love and just live your life the way you think it should be um and uh, be really happy because that's i think that's going to be uh, giving you the happiness that you need uh, just listen to your heart 
and do whatever you think is right. Thank you for listening to this episode of Celeb Savant. Please follow Barrett on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at Celeb Savant. That's C-E-L-E-B-S-A-V-A-N-T.